Norwegian Viva is the world's newest mega cruise ship. With a towering three-story racetrack and four terrifying slides, this almost billion dollar cruise ship should offer it all, but it has some big problems. Join us as we take you on a walkthrough of each deck, including a bonus tour of the Haven Suite area and Vibe Beach Club. We tell you everything no other cruise channel will tell you. Let's go. Welcome on board the Norwegian Viva. We're gonna give you a ship tour of this brand new mega ship. We're going to talk about some of the great parts of the ship and unfortunately some areas which really didn't live up to our expectations. Plus we're going to throw in all of our tips. So we're on deck 6, approaching the central Penrose Atrium. This is the heart of the ship and spread over three decks. It's incredibly futuristic and very different to anything else, but it has some problems, as we'll talk about. Surrounding the atrium are lots of shops. It's a big, bright space. If you've seen the movie Passengers, it does look very similar to the atrium on that spaceship. It's very different to any other Norwegian ship in that the seating is a little bit different, the entertainment here is a little bit different. It is really stunning and very futuristic, like David said, though. But I don't know if I like hanging out here. There isn't e really any atmosphere at any time. There's also some stairs going down to the next deck. You can take some really awesome photos in this area. There's lots of different seating areas. And like David said, you're going to find lots of shops on the Norwegian Viva. The biggest problem that we have found though is a lack of seating, particularly on the bottom deck. There's also just lots of open space with very little there. As we move further along, we enter a lovely little bar area with a circular bar. This is the whiskey bar on board and it has a wide selection of different whiskies from around the world. I mean, just look at that. She does look pretty spectacular, doesn't she? Unlike anything we've seen before. Now, one thing you're going to notice on this class of ship, so the Norwegian Viva and the Norwegian Prima, is just the amazing amount of glass with views outside. This is something that we absolutely love. Off to our first specialty restaurant. Now, this one is an extra pay. It's called Onda by Scarpetta. And it's an Italian restaurant and it is absolutely lovely. We love the food in here. And just look at the theming. We think it's some sort of like carcass of a whale. So you're in the bones of the whale. And it is really stunning. It's such a beautiful restaurant. And as we said, the food is lovely, but it is an extra charge, like we said. What we love about this restaurant, it has some wonderful hearty Italian dishes, but it all feels a little bit more elevated, a little bit posher. Now, one minor complaint we have is that the ship does feel very, very bright at all times of the day and night. Almost too bright, like you need to wear some sunglasses. Well, talking about sunglasses, on your right hand side, you're going to see some more shops with some sunglasses. Yes, there are absolutely spades of shops here on the Norwegian Viva. More than other Norwegian ships, more than most of the cruise lines, in fact, you'll find shops dotted all around the ship, as you can see. Lots of jewelry jewelry, gifts, technology, just about everything really. And now we're coming up to the photo gallery. This is where you can purchase any photos that you've had taken by the ship's photographers. There's also a little station here where you can organise portraits as well. So these are interactive screens where you can play some interactive games. I'm going to learn some magic. Oh, I did it without even doing anything. 
Moving further back, we've got the local bar and grill. Now, this is the onboard bar slash pub, but it really doesn't look like a pub. It looks more like a really cool, trendy Miami bar or something like that. There's a whole array of different types of seating, and we just love it in here. It is very, very comfortable, very bright, and very trendy very different to anything Norwegian's done before. There's also a little dining room just behind as well where you can choose to eat. The food here is complimentary and it's usually open 24 hours a day serving pub type food but it is a really good thing and we love that you can eat at any time of the day. So if you're hungry at say 3am pop in here instead of ordering room service and paying that extra charge. Now we're coming up to another speciality restaurant and that is Los Lobos. This is the modern Mexican restaurant. We absolutely love the decor in here and the food even more. It's just so vibrant and lovely. Norwegian have done such a fantastic job of putting lovely theming all around their ship. And this one is no exception. Just look at those hot pink seats. They're awesome. We're going to show the outdoor areas because you can dine al fresco as well in just a little bit. But back to the local on the other side, there's a huge screen for watching sports. I don't know what that is. I think this is football maybe. No idea. That's England women's football winning, Ben. That's what that is. Oh, at least we're winning at something. Anyway, like we said, lots of lovely seating areas. You can choose to eat out here as well if you want, if the dining room is full, because it is quite small. Anyway, we're going to one of my favourite places on the whole ship, the Indulge Food Hall. Now, this is brand new to Norwegian, and it only is on the Prima and now the new Viva, and it is spectacular. Just coming up on our right-hand side, we have an authentic tandoori oven, because the Indian here is amazing. So let's look at something very cool, and this is our favourite thing on this class of ship. It's the Indulge Food Hall. It's at the back of the ship and it's different food stations, all different types of food, serving some amazing meals and it is all included as well. You just grab a seat and make your order on the iPad and they bring it to you. It's all freshly prepared. So unlike a buffet, every single dish is prepared when you order. Now it does get busy in here. There's not that many seating, but there is a lovely seating area outside as well. So if you can't find seats in here, do have a look outside. But honestly, we come here almost every single day, especially for the Indian food. It is so good. I'm not kidding when I could say I could eat here every day. There's a drink station in the middle with a Coca-Cola machine if you do have the drinks package. But there's just so many dining options. Like David said, seven different concepts. But there is a slight problem. This area is absolutely tiny and it does really fill up at lunchtime and dinner time. So our top tip is to get here as soon as it opens and you're going to have your choice of seating because some of the seating in here, like the little booths, are really, really lovely. Our cruise only had 2,100 passengers on board. The ship pulls another 1,200 and there still wasn't enough seating in here for everybody. It gets very crowded and sometimes at peak hours you just can't find a seat. It's a really big issue and it really is a big shame because this area and the food is absolutely outstanding. Anyway, to the outside area and the wraparound promenade deck. You have a lovely bar out here and some stunning seating. Again, we just love that the Viva is really focused on outdoor areas. It means a lot to us because we really enjoy spending time outside, listening to the sea, listening to the waves and just enjoying that lovely sea air. This is a really lovely part of the ship. It always had a fabulous atmosphere out here. Whether you just want a drink or you can eat some food out here with the Indulge Food Hall just behind those doors. This area really is nicer than some sweet Orny areas that we've seen on other cruise lines. Now, also on this wraparound promenade deck, you've got several infinity hot tubs, one on each side with some lovely comfy beds. And of course, there's three dry drop slides. These are all complimentary and go from the top down to the promenade. 
pretty terrifying. Anyway, like we said, coming up on the right hand side is the outdoor seating area for Los Lobos, the specialty Mexican restaurant. We enjoyed our meal dining outside here and it was absolutely fabulous. We were sailing away with some fabulous views and fantastic food. We recommend checking out what time sunset is and make sure that you book your meal here about half an hour before to enjoy that gorgeous view. Anyway, just next door is the outdoor seating area for Under by Scarpetta, the lovely specialty dining Italian restaurant we were talking about earlier on. Now, I really don't know why cruise ships keep doing this, but here's another bloomin' glass walkway to terrify me. It basically hangs straight off the end of the ship with glass below, so whilst you're in port, you're above some concrete, which is not a nice feeling. And obviously, whilst at sea, you'll have some sea outside, but hey, it's on either side as well. There's some lovely seating areas as well, all towards the front of the ship. It really is a huge space. Other cruise ships, which are very similar, like the MSC Seaside class, have a really big outdoor area as well, but nobody does it like Norwegian. It's just fantastic how much effort they put into these outdoor areas. It really makes us love this ship for that. I particularly like how each area feels distinct and different from the next. It's not all just sunbeds along the promenade. There's different areas, which is really lovely. You can even walk right to the front of the ship which is pretty crazy. You can't really do this on any other ship. I haven't quite seen anything like this. On the other side, you've got a very strange sculpture park. I don't know what Norwegian we're thinking here, but hey, it is lovely to look at, I guess. And just like the other side of the ship, the whole area is mirrored. So you have that pool area with another infinity pool, which is open to absolutely everyone, but it does get very busy out here. And there's the other two drop slides. So these are the racing slides and they are quite intense actually. There are some strange cabins as well where the slides are intertwined, which is very odd. Those day beds that you see are complimentary. Anybody can use them. They are first come, first serve. Now down one deck to deck number seven, we have some views of the lovely theater. This is a multi-purpose venue, so it can turn into a nightclub and all of the seats go away. There's some amazing lighting and lovely technology going on on the roof as well. It is a really great space and it really reminds us of the nightclub slash theater on Virgin Voyages. We think somebody's been copying. Now, if you want to see a show here, make sure you arrive at least 30 minutes beforehand because it does get very busy and it is quite a small venue. On the Norwegian Viva, you'll find Beetlejuice the musical as well as shows like icons showcasing artists such as Barbara, what's her face? I can't remember what her name is, Barbara. What's her name, David? Barbara Streisand, I am clutching my pearls. Anyway, we'll go back into the Penrose Atrium again and on deck number seven you have the guest services desk and the onboard credit desk just in case you have any issues pop down here. Again you've got a little bit more of seating and just coming up straight ahead we have Starbucks which is an extra pay. They sell all of the same drinks basically as Starbucks do on land and they have snacks as well which are an extra charge. Now guys just look at these cups how cute are they you can get a Norwegian Viva Starbucks cup. David we've got to get one. I will be adding that to my ever-growing collection of Starbucks cups. Just to add that Starbucks is not included on the regular drinks package. You can buy either a Starbucks package, but it is included in the premium package. So that's the more expensive package. You can get Starbucks with that. Currently, the unlimited Starbucks package is $12.95 per day per person. There's lots of lovely seating on this deck as well. And oh my gosh, I'm getting excited again, guys. It's these windows. They're making me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. We love views in the atrium. It really is fantastic and brightens up the place a lot. Plus, you can have a lovely coffee, relax, and you can actually still see the sea, even if the weather's bad. 
There's also the shore excursions desk on this deck as well if you do want to book any shore excursions. Now we're moving along to an area called the Gateway. This is yet another shopping space that connects the atrium with the two entertainment venues that we're gonna show you in a second. So many shops, but blooming hell Norwegian, these lights on the roof are so bright. In real life, you've literally got to wear sunglasses. I don't know why it is so, so bright. It's like being on the blooming surface of the sun. And just before we get to the next two venues, you also have the art gallery. A complete and utter waste of space in my opinion. I'd rather have more room for the venues coming up, as you'll see. So next up, we're in the Sid Norman's Poor House. This is a music venue. It has a fantastic live band. It is really popular in here. The only problem is it is just far too small. There's around 55 to 60 seats in here, depending how much people bunch together on the benches. There's also room for standing at the back, but that is not enough for a ship that holds nearly 3,000 people. So if you do want to get a spot here, you have to arrive really early or expect to be stood at the back. Now I think you're starting to realise the big problem with this type of ship and it's something that we didn't see on the Norwegian Prima just because we were on her just for a few days. But it gets worse. The Improv Comedy Lounge is even smaller. I have no idea why Norwegian decided to make these venues so ridiculously small. There's about seating for 50 in here for a ship that holds just over 3,200 people. It is such a shame and such a mistake. You've got this beautiful new design ship, but it just can't be used by the majority of people on board at the same time. Now we're coming up to what we think is one of the most beautiful restaurants on the ship. This is yet another speciality restaurant, so an extra charge. This is Le Bistro and it is a French restaurant. Just look how stunning this venue is. Those glass chandeliers are absolutely gorgeous. Now my question of the day is, have you been on the Norwegian Prima? What did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you like it? What did you hate? Let us know in the comment section below. And whilst you're there, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Be a guest. Oh, this isn't Disney, is it? We have the humidor cigar lounge for all of you cigar smokers oh it's so posh isn't it david very lovely the only thing i smoke is salmon oh touche then coming up we have the lovely david oh you're talking about the wall i forgot what the venue is called david Yes, so it's the Metropolitan Bar. It's got a lovely bar and a lovely interactive wall as well, which moves when you touch things. And you'll often find live music in here. It's definitely an improvement over the Prima with the screen. It makes a big difference. Now we're coming up to another specialty restaurant. This is Nama, and this is the sushi and sashi 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 sashimi. I do apologise. It's the sushi and sashimi venue. Shash sashimi, David. And just on the other side, you have another Asian-inspired restaurant. It's called Hasuki, and this is the teppanyaki-style restaurant, where you have a teppan table in front of you, and they cook the food for you. And it's a lovely little show as well. It's a great interactive experience uh, for all the family. The chefs do a show in front of you. There's juggling, singing, all sorts. And right at the very back of the ship, we have the huge Hudson's main dining room. It's really beautiful in here. The decoration and theming is lovely. It's super bright. And yay, we have more windows all the way around. It's just fantastic. 
I think this may be the best looking main dining room that we've ever seen on a cruise ship. It is really stunning. It is. So here you come for your complimentary breakfast and dinner and lunch on a sea day. Now let's move down another deck to deck number six and we're going to be on the bottom level of the Penrose Atrium. Again, Norwegian have cheekily managed to squeeze in another few shops, guys. It's like a bloomin' mall, isn't it? And coming up straight ahead is the Cruise Next desk. So you can come here to get some deals off future bookings. We actually booked lots of uh, deposits here and we saved an absolute fortune. So it really does work if you want to book a next cruise. As we mentioned earlier, we do feel that this space is underutilised and does really need some more seating to make the most of it. And for some reason, they actually put a performers in this area as well. And you can't really see them anywhere but in this tiny little lounge. Anyway, you'll also find the Penrose Bar as well, which actually doubles up as the casino bar. The casino doesn't actually have a bar, which is very strange. So this area can get quite crowded. There's that performance area at the end. It makes absolutely no sense to me because nobody can see the singers unless you sat right down there. But again, we have to say this area really is stunning. It does look beautiful. It just doesn't work very well. There's lots of strange IKEA style seating and some bits of rocks and pebbles to sit on as well treat yourself guys anyway we've got that casino it's a bit of a weird one it feels a bit bare the good thing about this casino is though is that there's a smoking area and a non-smoking area and we really appreciate that we really do i think it's fantastic they're doing this the casino's got all your usual machines and tables that you'd find on any cruise line casino Moving further back, we've got the Belvedere Bar, and this is a lovely bar at the centre of the ship with two restaurants on either side. So one restaurant on either side, really, not two. This is the space where you'd probably wait to be called into each of these restaurants. On one side, you've got the Commodore Room and the other Cagney's. So the Commodore room is on the left hand side and it's another of the main dining rooms. So there's the main dining room upstairs called Hudson's that we just showed you and a smaller one called the Commodore room. Now this is a very small room but again the theming is really lovely. It's really elevated compared to some other cruise lines. So it's great and I think you can choose to eat in either one. It's up to you really. Fun fact, guys, we're actually doing this voiceover on the ship because we're trying to get this video to you as quick as possible. And we're actually quite moving a lot. We're just off the coast of uh, the Amalfi Coast in Italy and it's moving. Anyway, I digress. Next up is Cagney's. This is the American Steakhouse and it's one of the specialty restaurants. So yes, an extra charge. But the theming in here is really lovely and we have had some really fantastic meals in here. We prefer this over Chops Grill on Royal Caribbean ships. Yeah, absolutely. It is again one of our favourite restaurants. You can dine here for breakfast and lunch if you're staying in a suite or the Haven. Oh, and talking about the Haven, on every single deck, there's a private Haven elevator. Should we take it up, David, to deck number 16 and have a little nosy? So this, people, is the Haven Lounge. Oh, isn't it posh and lovely? It's very sparkly, so we better not touch anything. On the left-hand side, we have some computers where the staff sit and they can book you things like shows and dining, and it's where you'll find the concierge as well. There's lots of lovely, comfortable seating, and again, some lovely lovely panoramic windows on the other Norwegian ships you don't usually get the panoramic windows now this area is lacking a little bit because there's no coffee machine have no idea why and there's no live music either so it does lack atmosphere you've also got the bar as well which is the private haven bar make sure you subscribe because this cruise was our first ever time in the haven and oh did we have some thoughts Lots and lots of seating in here. It is a really comfy space, but as Ben said, it is quite quiet. 
I don't know, it's just lacking something really. You pay all of that extra money to go into a suite and it's not cheap, sometimes up to eight times the price of a normal cabin. I would expect to see a little bit of music and entertainment and I definitely expect to see a coffee machine. We tried ordering coffee at the bar and the waiter basically told us they don't have it, which is very, very strange. I know you can get your butler to bring you coffee, but a simple coffee machine would be lovely. But yeah, it does look beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah, it is a nice space to sit during the day and read a book. It's that kind of atmosphere in here. Now, also in the Haven private area, if you're posh enough, there's also the Haven restaurant as well, which is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we just love how they've put lovely panoramic windows all around the restaurant again. You do not know how good this is, guys. It's fantastic. So all of those beautiful sceneries, you can see here the lovely port of Sanero in Italy, which is on the Amalfi coast, and you just get those beautiful views. The food here is really lovely and definitely elevated compared to other dining rooms but do keep in mind that the menu doesn't change which is also a bit strange they also do a little buffet thing during breakfast time as well and you can also choose to eat al fresco in the outdoor seating area here you don't need to make a reservation to dine in the haven restaurant you just simply turn up and wait but there really isn't any waiting because there's blooming tons of tables so let's take a look at some of the outdoor areas here in the Haven. So if you're a sweet guest, this is what you get to enjoy. And we have to say it really is lovely. The Haven is actually located at the very back of the ship, unlike other Norwegian ships where it's located at the front. So, we, so you definitely are more sheltered from that wind. And just look at these chunky beds. They are so lovely. So it's all first come first serve for any bed here. And they are super comfy, lovely towels, very comfortable. And then the pièce de résistance is the amazing infinity pool at the back. And it really is absolutely beautiful. It sticks right off the end of the ship and it's just blooming stunning. I mean, how beautiful is this area? It is a really lovely, relaxing space. It is fantastic to be laid there and enjoying that infinity pool. There's also a lovely little sauna and an ice room just behind the infinity pool. The ice room was unfortunately closed when we were filming this, but it's just behind the pool. The one thing we love about the sauna and ice room is that it has big glass windows so you can see the wonderful view while you're steaming or saunering or icing. Mm -hmm. And all of these beds are all complimentary if you're in the Haven, you don't have to book them out. And they are really, really lovely, especially when the weather is as as beautiful when we filmed this. Something else you'll also find here is the Haven Bar outdoor version. So despite this area being quite exclusive, it still was very, very busy and on sea days it was hard to find a sun lounger. There's also an outdoor bar here as well, so you don't have to traipse inside to order your favourite drink. Now, moving up one deck is the Haven Adults Only Space and up here you will find two large hot tubs. Unfortunately, even though it clearly states 16 plus only as an age range, there was lots of kids up here, guys, We're talking 10 year olds, 12 year olds, lots of lovely sun lounging areas with very comfy beds. Comfy beds. There's also a small smoking area for smokers at the very back of the haven. Now we're moving into the Vibe Beach Club. This is an extra charge sunbathing area. You do not get access to this if you're in the Haven. The only way you'll get access is by buying a pass. Passes usually cost around $250 per person for a seven to nine night cruise. They do also have some cabanas as well, and these usually cost about five to $600 for the duration of your cruise. You'll also find two lovely pools slash whirlpools at either side, and it really is a lovely little area and much quieter than the Haven, in fact.
In this area you'll also find a bar where you can get your favourite drinks as well. Personally, I think that Haven guests should get access to here for free as it is actually connected to the Haven and because on our cruise the Haven was basically sold out, it was so busy, like we said we couldn't get a sun lounger at some points on a sea day, whilst here in the Vibe Beach Club it was very quiet, so for what you pay we'd expect a little bit more. Overlooking the Vibe Beach Club is the Speedway Bar. Now this is actually tucked away at the back and it was always very quiet. It does overlook the Vibe Beach Club area so there's not that much privacy in the Vibe Beach Club. I mean all you want in the most relaxing part of the ship is a racetrack right? In this area you're also going to find a mini golf course as well which looks super fun. It is quite small though and it's all covered which does make it feel a little bit dark. On our cruise we very very rarely saw this area used and you'll find out why in just two seconds. There's also some darts areas as well where you can go and play darts in some little booths with your friends. But you're wondering why? It's because they've started Blum and charging $10 per person to play the mini golf and $20 per person to play the bullseye darts. Now that is so expensive. Up here you'll also find the entrances to all three dry slides as well. There's also a sports area that has lots of different table games such as ping pong, table football and even beer pong as well. Plus there's a cage where you can do sports as well. A cage David, that sounds funny. I have to say this is very inspired by Virgin Voyages as well and does look very, very familiar. Now let's head upstairs to the viewing platform. Now how expensive is the go-kart speedway David? Well at the time of filming it was 15 US dollars for a go on the go-kart but that does change depending on the cruise, the time of day and how many people are on the racetrack. You can also buy an unlimited pass for 199 US dollars per person. Our top tip is to book this as soon as you get on board because it can get very expensive. $15 sounds a lot but it is really fun and like we said this track is huge. So next, let's take a look at the main pool area. Here you have one pool and two hot tubs on each side. It is very, very small for the amount of passengers on this ship. And it's also, and it's also completely dwarfed by the racetrack. When the racetrack is on, it's quite noisy as well. But there is sun loungers here. There's also additional sun loungers just at the top here, which we're gonna show you where there is some more sunbathing space. It is very confusing to us why they decided to put such a tiny pool area on board for a ship that holds over 3,000 people. It feels like all of the interior areas are very premium and lovely, but then they just forgot about the outdoor areas and just stuck a huge, gigantic racetrack on top. Hmm. You'll also find the Waves Bar here as well. Now let's move up another deck, you'll find lots of sunbathing space, so whilst the pool deck might be quite small, do bear in mind you do have those two pools on those lower decks on the walk around deck as well, there's lots of sunbathing area, so there's plenty of sun lounges and there's some really nice ones as well, quite premium sun lounges, but you're going to have to get there quick because they will go quickly. As you can see, all of those comfy sun loungers have all been saved by some selfish person at 7 o'clock in the morning. They weren't even there. Naughty, naughty. 
There's also a half-baked kids area as well. It's a little bit disappointing. I'm not sure what it is with all of these weird shapes, but this is it for the kids, basically. Outdoors. Something also for the kids as well is a water slide. So yes, there is a water slide on board. You do go around in a rubber ring and it is pretty cool. You go up and down and around, <laughs> as you do. Moving back down, we have the Palomar restaurant, which is a specialty seafood restaurant. This is the little bit of the outdoor area just by the pool. And now magically we're inside again well done norwegian with these beautiful panoramic windows isn't it just beautiful imagine having a lovely meal here at sunset you can use the outdoor seating area during the day as overspill seating from the buffet just opposite is another specialty restaurant yes another one an extra pay restaurant called food republic it's kind of an asian fusion restaurant where you order on those ipads again windows tick well we asked for panoramic windows and here we have it folks some slides next up we have the mandara spa now this is the spa area where you can get treatments such as massages things with your nails and also a barber shop and hairdressers Here you'll also find the thermal suite. The thermal suite is quite unusual with a lovely pool and several different rooms to chill out in. You get access to the thermal suite if you either pay for a daily rate or if you're in one of the spa cabins. Just at the opposite side of the ship, we have the outdoor seating area for the buffet. So next we have the Surf Side Cafe, and this is the main buffet on board. Now, what can we say about the buffet? It's very small. It gets incredibly busy. Also, this is the main walkway through from the pool area to the lifts. So not only is it busy as a buffet, it's busy as a walkway. Top tip though, for breakfast and lunch, you can grab your food from here and head next door to Food Republic. There's overspill seating over there. There's also seating outside as well. But it has a great selection of food. The food has been very good on our cruise in the buffet. All your usual buffet items, a grill, hot entrees, a meat selection, salad bar, and of course, desserts. Now I have to say, I was very, very impressed with the food on offer here. It is so much better than Royal Caribbean. It's really fantastic. But like David said, it's so, so ridiculously small, about one quarter of the size of a normal buffet on a ship this size. We just can't understand why they did spaces this small on this ship. It just makes it less enjoyable. Also in the buffet, you'll find the Surfside Bar serving extra pay drinks and coffee, along with a complimentary beverage area as well with three teas, coffees, juices, water. So just next door to the buffet is the Surfside Grill. Now this place could easily be missed because it is tucked away right at the back of the buffet. It's a small grill, serves your usual things that you expect, burgers, hot dogs, fries, and a salad bar. Again, this area is very, very small. It kind of feels like an afterthought. I think it has space for about 10 or 20 people maximum. So let's move up to the very front of the ship and the very top of the ship. I do love a good ship model, and this one is blooming huge. I don't think we'd even fit it in our house, David. It is definitely bigger than our front room. 
So coming up straight ahead, you've got the Galaxy Pavilion. Now this is an extra pay area where you can play all types of arcade games, VR, motion simulators, all that sort of jazz. So be prepared, you're about to be transported into space. Treat yourself, Luke Skywalker. The kids are going to really love this area, but do bear in mind it is quite pricey. So make sure you keep an eye on their cards when you get on the cruise ship and make sure that they can't go spending money without you knowing. All around the ship you're going to find interactive screens which are really helpful to find places to see what's going on and you can even book things as well which is pretty good. Now another of our favourite locations on the ship at the very top in the front is the observation lounge. It is a little bit smaller than the breakaway class of ships, their observation lounge, but it is really lovely. There's lots of very comfortable sun lounges and day lounges and lots of beds and comfy seating it is really lovely but like i said it really does get very busy in here and there's been a few times where we can't get a seat it is a really relaxing space i absolutely love the colors in here it's also a great spot for a quick bite or a coffee now these are all complimentary you can see the included drink stations there for tea juices, water, coffee, and they also have snacks at breakfast and lunchtime. We saw scones, actual scones. Now, do you put your cream on top or jam? Let us know below. Just look at that, isn't it just absolutely spectacular? The furniture in here feels very high end and very lovely indeed. Oh, beautiful place to hang out on a sea day if you can grab a seat like we said there's also a bar to grab your favorite cocktail or even a pre-dinner drink So that's it cruisers, thank you so much for watching our video of the Norwegian Viva Tour. We hope that you appreciated the honesty and transparency in this video as well. We paid for it all ourselves so we can bring you actual content that you can trust. Anyway, a big thank you to all of our patrons as well. If you'd like to support us further by becoming a patron, you can click the link in the description section below. In return for your support, you receive extra benefits such as behind the scenes videos, as well as advert free videos, plus early access to all our videos and a monthly Zoom chat. If you're interested in seeing what this ship is like, check out our Norwegian Prima series. Click on the screen right now. Go on, do it, click on it. That's it till next time. Happy cruising! <laughs>